as if that was a Casio and they're just searching for it right now, but it's actually oh. not. Let's see if your predictions are true. Nar has been left open. He is on blue side. He does control the pick. He, th this is the information I got from the bad. So, you know, if it's not true, there it is. There it is. <laughs> Instant Gnar lock-in. Of course, a strong power pick. Shen is still up and available, as is the Ash, the rising in popularity AD carry in the jungle pool. Also wide open. Rek'Sai, Gragas, Elise, each of those up and available. So, INTZ, a lot of flexibility here in the second rotation, but it feels like there's just so many good picks left available. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. I also, uh, I like this from Yang. I mean, he was flirting with the danger as if they leave it up. You know, we left Cassiopeia as well as Anar. Interested to see whether Tokas plays a Cassiopeia now. But he just wanted to see whether they were willing to first pick it. And the best one, of course, that is risky. But uh, he's a really good player, Yang. I have a lot of respect for him, actually. So, I've uh, been a massive fan since I first saw him all those months ago at IWCI 2015. And... Really interested to see if he does have that counter for this pickup now. Interesting. Of course, the Shen matchup has been known to be kind of back and forth, but since the rise of the Frozen Mallet build, haven't gotten to see it too many times. Revolta really taking his time to figure out what he wants, but in the end, it will be the Rek'Sai, and it looks like the Ash as well. So, solid, consistent jungler paired with what has been the most popular AD carry on this patch. Just so much utility and lane pressure in that Ash. Yeah, hashtag just another global comp coming out of the INTZ lineup. <laughs> I, I think that's very fair to say, you know, if they're able to get uh, you know, any kind of lane gang going in the bottom lane, uh, Macau, Jockster, as well as Revolta down there should really be able to put down some pain. So we'll see whether Rays goes back to some relative safety. I mean, he's played a Caitlyn game already, I believe. He does like the long range. Uh, he's not a Jinx player like Radia was a time before. And I think, of team. course, Jin's still available. Lucian's still available. It's, I mean, maybe you know a little bit more about the Chiefs than I do. Guaranteed, actually, that you know more than no, I do. But Jin I can't imagine the Jinx is the appropriate option. No, Jinx is not an appropriate <laughs> option. I, I think that Jin or Caitlyn is what they will go towards. They do like having range advantage uh, in bottom lane. Uh, and, you know, that's why they don't really pick Lucian all that much. Uh, that's an aggressive Early. duo, though. Taking the time. Is this going to get locked in? We'll swap over to the Casio. We've got, you know, the Oracle here. <laughs> Jake's Bon Tiberi <laughs> on the desk to predict exactly what's going to come through for the Chiefs. But Gragas, of course, the perfect matchup into Rek'Sai. Pretty much the standard here on 615, as well as both a comfort pick for Swiffer and a pretty solid blind pick, it seems like, into most matchups. Yeah, it is. Uh, so we'll see whether the Casio Peter does come up trumps. Uh, now I'm really interested in the Mel's pickup because Swiffer and Oceania was a big proponent that Cassiopeia dumpstered Melzaha. I mean, there's a delay on Melzaha's ultimate where you can sneak the Cassio ult in and actually just shut him down completely and then blow him up. Uh, so that's interesting that they actually want to pick up a band the Mel's away regardless. Uh, see whether the uh, Braum comes out now for Jockster. I mean, it does shut down Gragas's late game engage quite effectively. And the mustache lane really is something that, you know, is quite popular internationally. Uh, would hate to see that they gave up Nah just to run an echo into it again. But mm. potentially, you know, that's a good counter there in the Tarek, the fact that they can shut down a lot of this Wombo. Yeah, exactly. And the sustained damage from Cassio, eliminated for a few seconds, may give them the time to cut through their opposition. Tarek and Echo locked in. This is an interesting matchup and one that we have not seen go in the favor of the Echo at all, even with some small early leads. Volta may have to back up a little bit there in the top side of the map because... Nar is just so oppressive early on, and now the Chiefs, all that's left for them to decide on is this bottom lane already facing down the Tarak Ash. They've got all the information they need. Yeah, they certainly do. To be fair, I think the last time we saw Echo picked up, it actually went further a battle, and, you know, just couldn't go with the Nar late game, went for more of that skirmishing potential and seeking out the AD carry. Uh, you know, that damage increase does help as the game goes on and being able to assassinate people, but... Uh, this is an interesting uh, matchup now. Also, it could still be a flex pick, uh, is something that I do want to put, point out. So we've already seen one mid-echo. I think it was out of Lion Gaming. Uh, and we'll see whether this is something that is available for a second time. Chiefs taking the last couple seconds here, locking in the Bard and the Ezreal. And now we'll get to see if it is going to be that flex pick for INTZ. But personally, that, that matchup seems pretty difficult. Trying to leap into the Miasma, trying to leap face first into Cassio. Hey, I'm not saying it's a great matchup, but I've seen the <laughs> Nar one go the other way as well. So uh, I certainly agree. Both uh, captains there, quite pensive. You see Revolta on your right, Swiffer on your left, uh, having a bit of a stare into the screen. Swiffer, please shave. Uh, but 
That's a really high damage late game comp coming out of the Chiefs. I mean, Bard does more damage than any support, really, apart from that brand that we've seen running around a couple of times. But the Ezreal is so good at four or five items. And, you know, Cassiopeia and Nah, they're, all, they're both fantastic. Uh, you talked about difficult matchups. Uh, this one isn't any easier. Uh, but it's something that we've seen a couple of times internationally. Uh, I don't like it, but I know mm. some mid laners do. Now looking at it. Is he going to lock it in? The Cassidin, a power pick across a lot of regions, has seen a lot of ban priority in Europe. Does make for a lethal split pusher, but the early game feels next to impossible, however. So that's what it's about. You just hit the nail on the head. I mean, right now, the Chiefs comp is so good at team fighting. I mean, there's not really all that much INTZ would be able to do if they want to avoid that, uh, especially with the engage out of both Gragas and Bard that is pretty much guaranteed. Uh, however... Now with double teleport, now with the ability for a late game Cassidy once he hits 16 to go into a side lane and chase down nearly anyone on Summoner's Rift, they do open up this 1-3-1. One, one. And especially if Macau, you know, prioritizes the Hurricane, as we've been seeing a lot lately, just sits in mid lane and farms it out. Uh, there is the potential for this game to just continue to stall for INTZ. And, you know, they get towards that 1-3-1 one, one and that uh, inevitable doom of the Chiefs. And it, it seems like a, a pretty solid spot for them to be, but they're going to need to have a winning lane for that to work. And, and with the Echo, as well as the Kasten picked up, those lanes don't feel like they innately win their lane matchups. It feels like INTZ are going to need a lot of time to get those picks scaled up and effective. Yeah, what I'm expecting is a level 6 hit into the bottom lane with the Ash Arrow as soon as it's up, and then rotate them into the top lane and try and shove the Nar out like straight away. Get that tempo advantage that you get from generating the kill and then just run it up top lane. I mean, Tarek is quite tanky at that stage. You know, Revolt is going to be running around on Rek'Sai. So I think that that's a pretty telegraphed uh, game plan there. You know, now it's on Egypt, It's on Raze to see if they can dodge out of what is a really powerful bottom lane duo uh, coming out of INTZ. And I got to say, I like the Bard pick coming in here for Egym. You know, it's not quite global, but it will give them a little bit of opportunity to respond to this very oppressive composition between the Rek'Sai, side, the double te teleports, and the Ash arrow. Just a lot of potential for engage here, a lot of potential for global mobility. I think the Chiefs may struggle with it, but they are picking up a little bit to help them respond, at least as we get into game. Chiefs on the blue side. You can see their opponents, INTZ, on the red. Praise be to 615. We're going to have some standard lanes here. <laughs> and this is going to be really interesting in the standard lanes because you can just see people are picking so much for bully lanes now. I'm um, actually interested that Jockster went with the uh, exhaust. So that really is a mix up there. Um, Potentially a lot of respect paid over to Swiffer. Yeah, it definitely could be the case. See Rays and Egypt taking a bit of poke. Not going to be able to clear out that ward, but they are going to have the range advantage in this bottom lane. Should make for... Relatively easy trades in the early game, however. Second Ash gets the opportunity to back. She is going to be able to outgold the Ezreal just based on that tier that Raze will be forced into. And historically, this has kind of been a game of two halves of the map. I mean, Yang and Revolta have kind of always been the two big players for INTZ. But uh, historically, Swiper and Spooks have struggled for the Chiefs. I mean, MVP domestically in the OPL went over to Carbon, which is Legacy's jungle. And Swiper kind of was seen as the third or fourth best top lane in the region for a while by a majority of people. However, this tournament specifically, they really have stepped up their gameplay. I think that Swiper and Spooks definitely have been the two most consistent uh, members of the Chiefs. As Not going to see too much come out here, but looking to see more of that consistency today. Of course, a rough game one on day one, although we may see a little trading here. This was actually Crepo. You're a good friend that taught me about this. Uh, you know, one thing about the Bard that you have to point out is that he's one of the best level one champions in the game. So it's better to disrupt their camp and, you know, keep them down for the level one and try and trade with it than anything else. Although Raze now has taken a lot of damage in that bottom lane. Yeah, unfortunate set of circumstances there. It looks like he may have gotten over aggressive and tanked a stun from Jockster, although can't quite be sure. Ezreal already pushed under tower, not the look that they wanted, but this is the pressure on bottom side that INTZ were looking to get that we talked about. Now, may free up a little bit more pathing options for Revolta here as we start to work through the first clears. Certainly looks to be the case, and Revolta's done a very smart thing here. He started on the wolf camp, smited that away. It means that, you know, Spook's telegraph ward onto the blue buff is not going to be available. Oh, Macau taking the stun. Yeah, good stun there. Uh, however, you can see that INTZ, they definitely know this Chiefs lineup. I mean... If anyone follows their Twitter pages, they're definitely really good friends, uh, both of the teams. So this is just showing that they've played a lot against each other lately, and uh, Revolta seems to have a pretty effective early game against Spook's pathing. 
And you can also just see Ray is playing very safe in this early lane matchup. Clearly not looking for any trades, even though Ejim kind of hanging out on the front line. Not afraid to trade blows there, knowing he doesn't have to be too scared of the Tarek. Yeah, I think Ejim's just trying to get his economy rolling. I mean, with that Spell Thieves. And I do like the point that you... Uh, raising about, you know, Raze doesn't really have to look to be aggressive here. He can play this one nice and safe. He's got two organically winning lanes in the Cassiopeia in the fact that he does have that big Gnar in the top lane. So unless something goes really right here for Revolta, who gets a deep ward, uh, these lanes should start winning and pushing out. And then it does come down to how can they impact the bottom lane, these two junglers. Mm, Spooks, though, looking to make his presence known on the top side, trying to contest the Scuttle Crab. Do you believe it's going to go over to Revolta? Not going to get that one in the end, but looking at the lane so far, everything just about even. Ezreal suffering a little bit. Revolta taking a bit of damage, but pretty passive early phase thus far. Kind of waiting, I think, on those level 6 before we're going to see any real moments of aggression. Although, may have some in the bottom lane. Good stun to respond. Ejim going to back out here. Ray's continuing to extend the trade, however, taking a lot more than he bargained for. He's going to back off. Not an excellent trade for the Chiefs, but not losing too much either. Now the gank on the top side. Knock up onto the Gnar. That is a great start. Swiper trying to make his way out and is going to be able to do so. Yank stepping forward. Not quite what he wanted. Now dashing away, but Gragas is here. Gragas is looking for the kill. Certainly is, and Swiper's nearly got the transform, you know, so this could be a turnaround gank here. Chiefs just want to shove out the lane. Really nicely done by Revolta, but an overcommit, at least in my opinion, from Yang. He had the flash. He had the advantageous trade. You just got to settle for that every now and again and make sure that you can get yourself back in a winning position. Instead, now Swiper gets a shove on the lane. Teleport has to be expended out of Yang. So I love the idea out of INTZ. I actually think it's the right call. I mean, get up to help out the Echo in the losing matchup because we know that you have to impact it early, but overcommitment does cost them big. Yeah, and of course, forcing that teleport out while Nara is going to get the freedom to walk back to lane. So that will be a one global advantage for the next few minutes. And it's clear that Swiper is looking to win lane here. You can see the double Doran's picked up alongside the boots. This man looking for some early trades, but the same can be said about Jockstra on the bottom side. Although, Raze and Ejim looking more and more comfortable as they get more levels in this lane. Yeah, that one actually went much better for Raze and Ejim. And you can see that Ejim wants to keep pushing it. Uh, that might be a little bit over-aggressive one more time, but... Uh Ezreal's kind of this weird AD carry that tier is such a horrible item to back on just by itself <laughs> if you can't get it stacking up. In saying that, levels suit him better than most. So uh, if you can keep the uh, Ash in lane, if you can make sure that you're not getting shoved out and any free backs going down, uh, Rays can start pulling ahead in this one. And of course, this is one of the only times in the game where they're going to be even in terms of attack damage in the early game. And Ezreal, level 3 on that Mystic Shot could be important as both AD carries approach level 5. However, I still can't imagine we're going to see anything too insanely aggressive, although both sides do seem pretty eager to trade here. Certainly doing this just proves that, you know, uh, counter jungling is a team effort because this is twice that Spooks has been caught out on different wards that have been pace, placed down by Jockster as he's got deep vision. You know, that one at the Krugs, the one before at the Raptor Camp. So they're doing a good job of tracking Spooks across the jungle, making sure that he's not having the early game impact and freeing up Revolta to, you know, just farm up and continue to be aggressive. Yeah, Revolta now extending that deep vision further into the jungle, trying to get some sight on that Raptor camp, stop any kind of aggressive ganks, but maybe looking to make a play on a Swiffer. Cassidy does now have the level 6. Swiffer potentially caught out. In comes the Rek'Sai. Flash out from Swiffer. Good reaction. Ooh. Misses on the alt. He actually thought the Revolta was going to follow there, and I think that Revolta probably should have followed there. Uh, more action. Macau taking a little bit of damage here, but it looks like just going to be an extended trade. Jockster making the most out of that passive. But honestly... Every lane seems pretty eager to look for these little exchanges, these little fights, and maybe this is that uh, the effect of both these teams knowing each other is that they just don't really have to hold back. Some cow gets stunned up. Josh are looking for a stun of his own, but now Ejim is in trouble. Summoner spells are available. The Ignite, if they look to turn this, they're getting aggressive onto Jockster. Exhaust goes down, but it's too little too late. Ejim makes it out, and that's first blood for Raze. Fantastic 2v2 play out of the Chiefs duo lane. We keep talking about the fact that, you know, if Ezreal doesn't have to go back and buy the tier, if he keeps it nil all in items, he will eventually come out ahead. That is a big win because the Chiefs look like in some of their winning lanes they were starting to lose some pressure. So in the one that we thought would go the other way, they pull out ahead, of course. I mean, a straight 2v2. Not giving up any pressure across the map either, either and still holding on to both of their flashes as well. Ejim getting a little bit cheeky here. Steps forward. Not too scared to tank a volley, but Revolta and Yang are making their presence known on the top side. Swiffer and Spooks not going to give this blue buff up quite so easily, however. 
That's a heads-up play one more time out of Gang. Oh, I mean. teleport down to the bottom side, oh. though. They're in trouble. Portal comes out, trying to make it in. Flash in from Ray's. Talker's not going to pursue here. Both of them actually burn the flash. So that's a good teleport out of Talkers. One more time, Jocks are getting deep vision. They are doing a great job of tra tracking this Chief's lineup. Now they have control over the red buff, potentially even the dragon if they want to go for it. So really like how, even though First Blood went over to the Chiefs, which we're going to take another look at here, I mean, heal was already used from a cow, and that's all it's really about. I mean, Ejim steps forward. They go aggressive. Exhaust, not enough. Great heal out of Raze to save his support. Uh, but... The control over the bottom side of the jungle really is starting to come out in INTZ's favor. And I, I think that that's what a lot of this game is going to be about. Spook's trying to control Revolta. And Revolta right now is getting the better end of it. Yeah, Revolta absolutely owning the bottom side of the map. And as you said, a team effort from INTZ. But the gold's still in the favor of Chiefs. They are able to pick up that kill. But right now, with this map control, we're going to have to see what INTZ are going to be able to walk away with. The potential to turn it into so much more if there's even a single misstep from the Chiefs. I mean, when you have a look at what exactly is going down right now, Swiffer, he's walking into a fully water jungle, sees a couple of tunnels, um, but Bard needs to be careful. I mean, this is just such a... This is very risky. Yeah, and he's... Oh, oh no, the pings. Does ping him out. They're going for Swiffer again. Egym just saw them as they were leaving the brush. Uh, so that was best case scenario for the Chiefs. Yeah, really, I think the perfect situation now... Moving that gold lead up to 1k and not losing anything for the jungle control that INTZ have built. Definitely a little bit of a get out of jail free there in that extermish. One second sooner, one second later. May not have seen the pressure going down in the mid lane. Swiffer getting more time to get that flash cooldown back. Does still have the cleanse, but Cassidy starting to scale up now. And farming, honestly, quite comfortably in this lane phase. Yeah, farming terrifically. I mean, Swiffer was starting to open up a small CS lead, and then the gank comes out of Revolta. I mean... That just equalizes what should be a pretty bad lane. Uh. Oh, good stun coming in for Ejim, but Raze and Ejim may have overextended. Ezreal going to make his way out. Ejim now set to fall. Will he use the ultimate here? Looks like he's just going to be the sacrificial lamb as Talkers is going to grab that kill. INTZ making a move on the bottom side. Yeah, cross map looking to come here, in here out of Swiffer. Swiper does have the Megana, however, being spotted out nice and early by a pink ward. Now all of a sudden they know at best it is a 4v2 in this bottom lane. And they do have Jox's ultimate to execute on a dive. Chiefs might have to give this one up. Oh, Spooks is down here, though. They don't want to give up this tower first blood, but they're going to have to play very safe. Revolta moves in. TP now coming down to the bottom side. Immediately canceled. They're just buying time here. Swiper with a good heads-up play to save his team. Yeah, nice cancel TP, because now all of a sudden you're losing crate waves across the rest of the map. As Yang and Swiper tangoing. Oh, starting to go for a little bit more. Yang, has he overstayed? Uses the snap back to get out. Swiper not scared whatsoever in that little skirmish. Yeah, actually carted that one out nicely. And as we said, power of double Durans, man, that just wins you so many early game laying trades uh, that you wouldn't normally win, you know, if you went for something like a longsword ruby crystal instead. So got to give respect to Swiper. Certainly played for the laning phase and is starting to get a small advantage. As this morning, it is Rogi with a coffee delivery. So, you know... Heads up play coming out of the other play by play castle. <laughs> excellent, excellent decision making. Have to wonder where where our colors are in this though. Yeah, you actually do. That's three <laughs> days in a row that a color caster hasn't risen to the occasion. Uh, in saying that, you know, a coffee is a coffee, so I'm not going to argue where it came nope. from. Shout outs to Rogi, <laughs> the real MVP of this broadcast. Now, looking at the game, I mean, it's, it's 12 minutes in and it's been very even. We've seen two kills move on to the bottom side. There is that bottom side pressure that we talked about. But what is the breaking point for both these teams? Because it seems like they're just kind of poking at each other, looking for small advantages, and it's been nothing major quite yet. Yeah, I think the breaking point is as soon as Tokas gets to go into a side lane. I mean, he picked up Achilles farming incredibly well for a Cassidy. Uh So as soon as that Hurricane's finished up here for Macau, he's going to rotate into the mid lane. It's going to be very little kill threat because, you know, he's going to be roaming around with the Tarek that has that nice ultimate. And then Tokas is just going to be free to, you know, chase down whoever they send into the side lane against him. So uh, as I said, it's, a, it's one of those calls that, you know, in a best of one, it's really brave to make, but it looks like INTZ, unless they, something seriously goes wrong in the next three, four minutes, they're going to be playing towards that win condition. Yeah, and with, I mean, the scaling's still great for Cassio, still great for Ezreal. Even the NAR is going to be a pretty big threat moving forward, but you're just never going to be able to match the split push pressure that Cassidy brings to the table. 
However, you can see the trades on the top side still going in the favor of Swiper, and it's just getting easy for him as he moves forward, picks up the Merc treads, more movement speed, just trying to make sure he can stick on top again. Yeah, the big hope is actually that, you know, Cassio is never going to be able to match Cassidan. The big hope is that somehow Swiper's Nah gets to the point where he can match the Cassidan. All of a sudden, Cassio is chasing Yang out of the lane as opposed to the other way around because there's a legitimate threat in a Cassidan kill uh, split push lane. Uh, in the fact that he just might kill you. Uh, Yang, in the other hand, he's going to be looking to chip down turrets, you know, be annoying and to draw some ju jungle pressure. So uh, I guess different objectives coming out for both split pushes of INTZ. But uh, I think Tokas definitely is the one that is a little bit more scary at this stage of the game. Of course, with that Rod of Ages completed, he's already starting to scale up even further, really just waiting on that frozen mount to come in from Swiper. But now on the bottom side, Ejim... How did he hit that? I, that doesn't seem fair. <laughs> <laughs> that went left. That legitimately took a Oh, Spooks is here. I was waiting for the Tempered Fate, and there it is. Looking for the Gragas setup potentially, but just going to back off and trade for the Tarek ult. That's actually really key because they know that Revolta right now is on the top side of the map. Unless he ults down to a tunnel, which it doesn't look like there are many available. Spooks did a good job of clearing them out. No Tarek ult underneath turret with no Ash Flash. Going to be a very good siege potential here. And a good setup from the Chiefs to get that Tempered Fate to force those abilities out. And now they've got the freedom to pressure down. Tower dropping fast. Finding does go wide, but here is Revolta. Maybe looking for the turn. Creep Wave is falling down. So oh. it looks like just going to be about half the turret's health and almost all of Jockster's. He's still going to make it out, however. I mean, if Spooks had thrown out a cheeky ultimate there, that would have been lights out. And Revolta's just gone back. Now they know he definitely doesn't have ultimate. They didn't see him, however, so they're giving him the respect for now. Although maybe not, they're just going to double objective yeah. him. Now, ooh, aggressive play, potentially over-aggressive, but it's going to work out for the Chiefs once again, just making a bold call, and it pays off for them. I honestly think they had to go for it, because if they're not making the plays now, if we get into the stage of the game where the 1-3-1 really is set in, I mean, your region is a master of this, but if you really do get the 1-3-1 set up correctly, there's almost nothing that you can do as a team fighting comp against it, except for try and make hard engage play after hard engage, and into a Tarek, right? That's just not going to work. Yeah, and you never want to be caught in a place where the wrong decision will cost you a Baron. You're essentially choosing between Baron and an inhibitor at any given moment, and making the wrong call can cost you a game almost immediately. But one good thing is the fact that, you know, Ocean Drake, that's going to allow them to sustain up. So if they ever do get a siege going right now, the Chiefs is going to be good news. Ray's finished up an Iceborne Gauntlet on his way to a Man Immune before any items coming in for the Ash. Means that they do have a legitimate power spike advantage in this bottom lane now. And a window where there is no flash available and no turret sitting behind Macau. And Tarek roaming mid as well. Macau just clearing out the way before roaming out. We're going to have to see how INTZ decides to assign their lanes. When is this Cassidy going to be assigned to a side lane? When is Swiffer going to get the opportunity to be freed up on the side of Chiefs? Right now, you can see him just playing on the back foot, knowing he doesn't have pressure anywhere else on the map, and you know, giving a lot of respect to Revolta and Talkers. Yeah, I think it's more importantly, when can Ash actually go mid? Because right now, without that Hurricane, she just can't win the pushing battle. And if the Chiefs rotate into mid lane, all of a sudden, that's a big snowball that's starting to open up the map. So Macau, you can see, he's trying to pick up farm wherever he can, but the Chiefs are just letting it push in, isolating experience, stacking up tiers. Uh, so the Chiefs, finally, they made their proactive play. It came out trumps. A uh, small window now where they've got a 2,000 gold lead, but against the cast and against the scaling of the Ash, I still don't know whether that is a big enough advantage. Mm, especially as we move further and further into the game, the 2K will mean less and less. It's now on the Chiefs to continue to make proactive decisions, to continue to look to punish INTZ. Does not get easier. Now Ejim moving with Spooks to lay down some vision control. This is something we did not see from the Much Chiefs yesterday. Much better play out of the Chiefs. I mean, Ejim yesterday was just getting killed over and over again. Maybe just get him off the tank supports because he looked like he uh, thought he couldn't be killed and was quickly proven incorrect. <laughs> yeah. The will was breakable. <laughs> <laughs> it was very breakable. That nerf hurt. Oh. I'm telling you, man. Yeah. I mean... It looks like a small number, but then you really think about it. You're taking a lot more damage. <laughs> However, Chiefs have grouped now in the mid lane. Maybe we're looking for a bit of a siege there, just hoping to get it down a little bit of damage while Ash was forced to catch the wave. But Yang now free to move back onto the top side. And honestly, Yang doing a reasonably good job in this matchup. We've seen so many Echoes just get And they've given out. up on it all of a sudden. I mean, they've sent the Cassidy down bot. 
Uh, I think that Swiffer can just sit at the turret at this stage of the game. There's not really all that much kill threat, and there is no wave clear coming out of the Ash. So unless Revolta gets the engage of engages here, this turret's going to fall. Oh, it goes in on a raise. They're going to get the Tempered Faith. They're trying to stop it, but here comes the rest of the team. Revolta gets the knockup, but Raze is making his way out. Stun from Echo. Will it connect? No. Going to Sharkane shift out. Deal with it from the Tarek, but his team's going to have to deal on the back lines because Spooks moves forward. Looking for a bit more damage, both sides walking away empty-handed. Oh! Ezreal will flash out, but you're just delaying the inevitable. A quick pickup for Raze. Yeah, flashing in a straight line there. I mean, one of the Cardinal Sins, all of a sudden Swiper has Mega. Everyone is low. They need to back away, and the Chiefs get another victory. Excellent spot to be for the Chiefs. INTZ try to make the proactive play, but Ejim denies the engage, and it just does not work out like they need it to. Spending so much attention on Raze and him just slipping out. And that's really the benefit of the Ezreal pick. I mean, as soon as they saw how many threats were on the lineup of INTZ, you saw that the arrow just hit him point blank, but he was able to buffer the E in there. And I mean, the Kiwi, the young Kiwi, he's only 17 years old. Yeah. First international tournament doing a great job in saying that, you know, Yang really wasn't impacting that fight. He is quite strong at this stage of the game. Tokas still didn't get shut down. He's still farming up an absolute storm. So... And you got to think, the fight was still so close. I mean, the kill comes out, honestly, because of a little bit of a fumble on the flash there from Talkers, maybe not estimating where that Ezreal ult was going to be. And at the end of the day, both sides walking away with insanely low health bars, but the Chiefs still come out on top in the end. Yeah, they certainly did. And, you know, it was actually a really good reactionary Casio ult this time, even though invulnerable, like able to CC up. Let's take another look at it. So really nice ult here. I mean, it hits the AD carry. That's exactly who you want to get. But he buffers that E, as I said. And then watch Spooks. He goes straight to his AD carry. CCs up Revolta. And that's the Cassio ult I was talking about, because otherwise Tokas is absolutely decimating the back line, right? Spooks gets in on top of him. Good amount of damage goes down. Joxta gets caught between the turret as well as the wall. Should have flashed to the left. Didn't decide to do it mm. and gets caught out. And now they're punishing the 131 in one of the only ways effective that is going towards the Cassidy's lane still because of lack of wave clearing, just not oh, letting Cassidy it get set going in. forward, though. Spook's going to make his way out. Oh, flash from the arrow this time. Nice accuracy coming in from Macau on that one, but Ray is giving it the respect it deserves. Yang, though, now starting to look for this fight. This is an aggressive move, but Swiper not going to get caught by the parallel convergence and the trades. I mean, not looking quite in favor of the Gnar like they used to. I mean, it's still only the one item spike. This is the strongest that the Echo is going to be all game, I think. It's pretty fair to say. Uh, you know, sitting on that Trinity Force with the Boots of Swiftness. You know, he got the Fervor stacked up that time around. So you could see that the longer the fight goes, the better off it was looking for the Gnar. And while the Chiefs may not have gotten any larger objectives here, they do manage to take the blue buff away from the Cassidy. Good spot to be, especially as Swiffer will now be able to apply that much more pressure. But Talkers is moving in. Egypt potentially caught out. Bard says no. Talkers is doing a great job of making this Kassan in a pressure point. I mean, sure, he's falling a little bit behind in CS now, but the fact that he was able to keep up majority of the game and now he can sit in a side lane pretty much unharassed uh, is really making the Chiefs change up how they want to play. And you can see one more time that they're matching the Kassan lane because that is where the threat is. And it's really terrifying, too, and especially when paired with this Tarek. If he ever gets a big enough lead, suddenly you give Cassid in a stun. You know, you let him taxi that ability into your back line, and he's going to be able to clean up just about anyone. So once again, the pressure is on the Chiefs to make a move. They're getting small advantages. They've got the 3K lead, but is it going to be enough as INTZ continue to scale up and Talkers continues to be a looming threat? Not only the stun, but the invulnerability. I mean, Kassadin was one of those uh, champions where you're like, I kind of want, you know, an Abyssal Scepter. I also want to get maximum cooldown reduction, so give me a Morel and Omicron. Death Cap's great, Void stuff. Oh, crap, I forgot that I needed a Zonya's Hourglass. Well, all of a sudden, I mean, Joxta just gives him one for free, pretty much, but he can move during the duration. So, uh, yeah, I really like the tarek and combo here. Um, Hasn't been executed upon yet, and you know the Chiefs do have a 3,000 gold lead, but I keep going back to it. Isn't enough at this stage of the game? I don't think so. Dragon now set to fall. Looks like Spook is going to grab this one. Chiefs looking to set up a bit of an arena here in the Dragon Pit. Spooks get stunned up. They're moving in with the Tarek ult. They're trying to get the invulnerability, and Chiefs are trying to make it out. Great ult from the Cassio. In comes the Bard, Tempered Fate to buy time, but Swiffer is all alone. He just wants to be safe. He's going to be the Sacrificial Lamb. His oh team has goodness. to watch him fall. Revolta not going to make it. Swiper wants to get in there. Goes in with the wall. He's going to get one. He's going to knock Jockster back, but here comes the Parallel Convergence. Have they overstayed their welcome? It is a bloodbath. Talkers falls. Raze is doing so much damage from the backside. They get the stun on the Macau. Yang looking to turn it back in the favor of Ion. 
Giant TZ and Egypt, and Spooks are forced to run for their lives. Egypt maybe overextending here. Yang crossing across the wall, getting a decent amount of damage, is going to follow him through. That's not what you want to do. You never follow the Bard, and Egypt more than happy to punish out there as Spooks grabs the kill in that absolute bloodbath. And you saw that that was such a close fight. Sure, Egypt lived on no health, but Revolta lived on single digit health. And that Nar was centimeters away from cleaning up the whole of the INTZ lineup. But again, I'm going to go back to it. This is INTZ, not yet on power spike, still scaling up and taking it to the Chiefs team fighting composition just because of how effective this Tarek, this Kassadin can be in these really scrappy skirmishes. And now Revolta looking to get a greater advantage. Gragas and Bard are on the way up. Spooks may be hoping to shut this down. Revolta, what is your game plan? How are you going to make it out? Not going to be able to buffer. The tunnel is going to get locked up under the wall. Not a whole ton of damage here. He is relatively tanky, but knocked back. Raises on his way, and there is continual CC. Oh, patience on the tunnel. Decent amount of damage. And it's good that you bring up Raze, because in that last fight, I was I was so convinced that the Chief had lost out, but it was, we're going to see it here. Raze just untouched for the duration of this fight. Yeah, he came up massive. I mean, he goes over the back of the pit, and then this ulti actually kind of stops Swiffer for a while because all of a sudden Macau follows him into the pit. And that's Swiffer's like, this is where I parked my car. Uh, <laughs> but in saying that, uh, this Nah was centimeters away from grabbing Macau, Tokas, as well as Yang. And you know, you see they pick up a double kill here, uh, for their Ash. But the fact that Yang went in at the same time and Revolta just lived on a slither of health meant that it looked like it was going to go INTZ's way. Did he just go back for a chime? Is that what that was? Because <laughs> I, I was like, a masterful bait, but at the end of the day, for a chime? <laughs> <laughs> He's hungry for it, man. He wants more damage. <laughs> the problem with this bard build, you never get to buy damage. <laughs> Got to get more chimes, man. But you could see, I mean, the Ezreal, you're right, was popping off in that team fight. I mean, he's 4-1-1 one, and one raise, uh, the hopes of Oceania on the young Kiwi shoulders. Uh, Swiffer not having the best game so far, but, you know, he's continuing to scale up. He's getting some items behind him. And a tough spot to be as well, because there's just so many people who can leap onto him in an instant. Really needs the safety of that flash. Wasn't able to use it in the back end of that team fight. Does have it now, however. May make it easier in the future. Yeah, I think threatening is like the way I'd describe this comp actually out of INTZ because they can engage from anywhere really. I mean, parallel convergence as well as that Tarek stun is just uh, unsurprising. I get uh, like surprising when they come in on you. So uh, we'll see whether they're able to mitigate some of that. You can see they're looking for a double TP play one more time into the top lane, uh, waiting for Swiper to be exhausted. Yang's chilling out in base. Chiefs have overcommitted for this one, and it looks like they want it. Ooh, good use of the tunnel. Here comes the TP, though. Jockster moving forward. Make it burn down. Doesn't have the ult. This is devastating. Talkers gets knocked back into the team. The parallel convergence not going to connect for the stun. Raise. Down he goes. The Kiwi is on a rampage. Ejim moving forward. The whole team coming together to cush through the INTZ lineup. The tower now set to fall. Chief are dominating. Yeah, and maybe just going towards the Baron. I mean, Revolta is the same level as Spooks, but they burn it so quickly. And Ejim, you know, he's still got the Tempered Fate. No, he doesn't. He used it. So we'll see whether they're able to actually keep Revolta out of the pit because this now becomes a 50-50. Good damage moving forward, but in comes the Parallel Convergence. They have to respect the potential for the Echo here, but they're not scared. They're using the Casio. They're using the Mountain Drake. 2,000 health. Dropping down. In goes Yang. Tempered Fate. Not going to be available. Parallel Revolta Convergence into comes early. out. Revolta is he in too early. Gets knocked back into the wall. That's the combo. Revolta moving forward. Desperately moving towards the Baron. He tries to cut it down, but there is no hope left for INTZ as Chiefs managed to pick it up. And now it's a 7,000 gold lead. And that was just, he got a bit antsy. I mean, he went just slightly too early. It was 1,700 health and Macau couldn't get into the pit to help him out. Great Meganar there out of Swipe had picked up both of them. And now, you know, this is the one area that 1-3-1s one, one, fall down because they generally lack wave clear. And when you're against a barrened up squad that the Chiefs have and the inevitable siege is going to start coming out of this Blue Ezreal, it uh, becomes tough to be able to balance these side waves. You want enough threat to be able to take them into the side waves, but not enough that you know they're turret diving you. And of course, it's so risky to defend these towers as well. The Miasma from the Cassio denying any potential escape opportunities. And the Chiefs really just out executing in that last fight. And Jockster a little over aggressive on the turret costs so much. We'll get to see this Baron fight one more time. Yeah, and it's really about the fact that Yang dives in. And then Revolta feels like he has to go. So he goes in under the wall. But you can see 1,800 health. Big Meganar there. Slams Macau. Slams Revolta into the wall. And, you know, after that, they're just able to clean up the rest of the team fight. That means the Chief's now in a commanding position.
Absolutely where they want to be, but INTZ not going to make it too easy for them. Revolta coming over the wall. They're trying to set up the chain CC onto Spooks, just looking for a quick pick here, and down goes the Gragasaur, not making it out through the tunnel. Will he be able to make it to safety? Revolta is on the hunt. INTZ is moving forward, but Raze says no. Frozen Gauntlet more than enough to disengage. And look at this. All of a sudden, two waves being pushed up. They're stopping oh. the ports. The Nars Chiefs on the bottom side. literally have control over the entirety of the map, and INTZ, they are the ones that tried to force a team fight, and they lose so much for it. Swiffer trying to take down this tower in the mid lane. Talker's trying to get aggressive on the jungle, but Swiper's going to get the bottom tower. The gold lead continues to grow. INTZ are running back and forth. They don't know where they need to be. They're trying to get something. Ray is keeping the attention of two as Nar continues his onslaught. Swiffer into the mid lane to grab more. The gold lead grows. 10k for the Chiefs. INTZ are falling apart, and Nar is making it easy as they cut down. Talkers has to be scared if he steps forward. He will be cut down. And the Chiefs are just dominating. And all of a sudden, they just turn it on. Like, out of nowhere, the Chiefs, we said their time might be running out. They've just got pick after pick, and now Yang's in trouble. Now having to back away. Raze is fearless with Ejim backing it up. They're continuing to extend. They've already taken three towers off this Baron. They're looking to make it four. They're looking to continue to grow the gold lead. INTZ, they had so much hope when the comp was working, when it was scaling up for them, but the Chiefs are not giving them the opportunity. They are grouping up and they are taking down these towers. INTZ may have one last shot to turn this. Yeah, they've got the Ash Arrow back available, so the Chiefs should just back away and respect it. Instead, they're going to keep going. Revolta has a very deep flank. The Maybe Chiefs, this is dangerous. It, trying to get it out. Deal with it, says Tarek. Trying to get the invulnerability down. They're looking for the fight. The Chain CC is coming in. The Chiefs, are they caught out? Yang doing so much damage. Not going to get the chance to stop, snap back whatsoever. And Swiper is buying so much time. Ejim ferries the team to the front lines and suddenly INTZ are being torn apart. The inhibitor now dropping. Chiefs are going to be able to take the game as they push in. INTZ, one final fight and it was not enough. It certainly was not. And in two days, the Chiefs make it 3-0 after a horrible start against the CIS region, Oceania's Chiefs move on to 3-1. A commanding performance in the mid-game, and what started off as such a passive early game will end in the favor of the Chiefs. The young Kiwi at the head of the team to ferry that team to victory. Just an absolutely stunning mid-game there. Yeah, it certainly does. You can see Swiper. He's happy with the fact that he got the dart. He was just immovable on the back line. I mean, the Cassidy couldn't get past. Neither could Macau. And you know, look at Ray's. He's just so calm and collected. For a 17 year old, I'll be losing my mind. I am losing I my would, mind. I would tilt immediately <laughs> after dying. <laughs> like at, at, at every age that I have played this game, I'm a grown man now, and I would still, I would still tilt immediately on like four people showing up in my bottom lane. That is some mental fortitude. And you can see that the team's uh, showing a lot of love for each other there. Um, Yang still had a really good performance on that Echo. I think that's one of the best Echoes that we've seen actually going into the matchup, was able to really go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I like the Cassidy's pick. I actually like the overall comp. It was just an 